Welcome back to the League of Hustlers. And today we have the honor of interviewing none other than Saravan Ganesh, who's taught over 10,000 people how to create passive income leveraging digital real estate. Let's welcome Saravan Ganesh. So good to have you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. Same here. Yeah, I'm your co-host, HT. I'm C.D. Barnes. And welcome to... The League of Hustlers, where we help you prepare to prosper. All right. Saravan Ganesh, let's jump right into it. Give us a little bit of background about yourself, about uh, what you do and this, this business model that's been around for a while, that, but it's not well known. Let's, let's jump right into it. Tell us about yourself. Sure. No problem. Yep. Um, so my name is Saravan Ganesh. I do what's called local SEO local search engine optimization, specifically in that rank and rent, and we can get into the details, is basically a way to leverage digital real estate, put up your own digital properties, to simplify it, put up your own websites, and rent them out for to local businesses for a passive ongoing income. That's what I do. Been doing this for 10 years now, 10 years this month, as a matter of fact. Um, started teaching this about six to seven years ago. I have a Facebook group of about 10,000 members who learn from me. People making anywhere from $500 a month to $100,000 a month. Um, I have a couple of people who have made millions. I have one guy this year, he's on track to make $5.4 million with a variation of the rank and rent. So the, the sky's the limit, but yeah, there's a lot of people making a lot of money. Yes. Wow. Wow. So when did you start? I back in 2016 i believe 2014 october um wow so i i was working as an engineer um in general motors you know the car company here i had a great job the pay was good you know you know with you good thing about working in a car company is you know as you go up the uh, ranks that they even give you a company car right you get a company phone company computer company laptop company everything right and i was proud of that until i got into got to realize that the reason they give you all that is that's how they tie you to be in the job forever right <laughs> right and company this company that now you're a company man you know exactly there you go right so even though the money was good the the perks were good the status was good everyone was like wow you made it in life i was like i had a two-year-old back then uh and all i wanted to do was just stay home and play with her you know spend more time with money i mean suppose spend more time with my kid and uh that's when i started looking into how can I make something outside of my full time so I can eventually leave my full time job? And that's how I got to do this. Yep. Wow. Awesome. So wow. as far as the ranking rent, right? Um, are there specific niches or um, cities? Like what is the selection process for that? Is it? Sure. I'll get into that. I think I'll, I'll give you a higher level overview so people understand, right? Okay. Um, and then I can go into this, so it'll be a, more of a context here. So just a quick background, right? I was working, like I said, in a day job, just like everybody else, like some kind of a job or the other, put money on the table, right? Put on the table. Um, I actually, it's a funny story because I, I, I used, I follow Bob Proctor. Some of you may know Bob Proctor. I think he's one of the wisest men to be alive. He just passed away a couple of years ago. Um, oh, yeah. My and I, I used to listen to him all the time and driving to a job every day, almost every single day, I would listen to him. And one phrase he says is that the only reason you're making what you're making every year is because you haven't figured out how to make that amount every month. Right. Wow. If you are making $50,000 a year, the only reason you're making 50K a year is because you have not figured out how to make $50,000 a month. And I, I, I found that like, oh my God, that was intriguing, but I just did not know how. Long story short, I get an email from him one day and I, it, I didn't know that, but I was in his email newsletter. He was sending this email, his company was sending this email out to everyone, right? It basically said, um, join this underground group of people who make $100,000 a month. And I was like, okay, wow, what is this? Long story short, it turned to be a, a course on how to do a search engine optimization which is basically the art of optimizing websites and other web properties on Google. So when somebody searches for that, your website comes on the top. 
right? So it's a technical term, SEO, search engine optimization. But think of it in simple terms. If you want, let's say, HT or Vans, CD Vans, let's say you're looking for a plumber, right? You got a toilet leak in your house. What do you do? Where do you go? 10, 15, 20 years ago, maybe you went to the yellow book, the yellow pages, but most of the time people now, you go to Google, search for plumber in your city, plumber near me, whatever. Whether it's a plumber, dentist, whatever, you go to Google, right? Almost all the time, we just go and click on one of the first two, three, four websites, click on that and call the plumber and say, hey, plumber, come to my house and give me an estimate on how much does it take to fix this? No right. one goes to page, the second page of the page of the search results, right? We just we don't even go to the bottom of page one of the search results. Usually the first top three or four. So that plumber or the local business who's on the top of the search results for these search terms like plumber near me or dentist in my city, tree removal company here, what whatever it is, you know, those guys get all the traffic, all the customers. It doesn't mean they are the best in their job in their field. They may not be the best plumber in his field. It's just that he's showing up on the top of Google, right? Right. So what we do as a SEO company or somebody who does search engine optimization is we go to the plumber and we tell them, hey, Mr. Plumber, if I search for plumber in your city, let's say I'm in Metro Detroit. If I search for plumber in Metro Detroit, there's 300 people a month searching for this. That means there are 300 people actively searching to hire a plumber right now. Mr. Potential Client Plumber, right now, I don't see you on the top three, four, five results of the search results in Google. Your website comes on bottom of page one or page two, page three, something like that. And I can work on your website, optimize it, put more content, backlinks, all of that to get you higher so people find you when they search, search for you, search for your plumber. Does that make sense? Right. So the yeah, plumber yeah. would say, of course, you know, how much would it be? And I would say, hey, man, pay me $2,000 a month. I would work on your website, right, and work on it. And he can get to the top. I was doing that. Over time, I had quite a few clients, and I was making good money. I was making $15,000 a month, HT, even when I was still working a full-time job, having all these clients. That's beautiful. It got to a point, <laughs> this was 2016, 17 time frame, it got to a point where I was like full-time job, Plus these clients where I was doing all the work, the money was really good, but I was running, I was like a running like a chicken with a head cut off, you know, like working nonstop. Yeah. And I was like, every client, if they are paying me 2000, 1000, 1500 a month, they wanted reports from me. They wanted to know what I'm doing, you know, all of that stuff. I was like, wait a minute, is there a different way where I can like passive, passive way to make money? Right. And that's when I heard another quote again from Bob Proctor. He basically said, is not just how is not just how much money you make, it's how you make the money that provides a quality of life. Uh, so what I've done is now I've taken this local SEO, search engine optimization, this skill where I can go to any business and say, hey, I can rank your website at the top. And if you think about it, every single business in the US, in the world, they need customers. And 80% of businesses, they get their customers from Google. So I can literally go to any business make them understand the importance of coming to the top of Google for your search results, for your service, right? I took this model of what I did is instead of going to a, a plumber or a tree company or anybody, any business and saying, hey, you pay me $1,000 a month, I'll pay you, I'll get your website at the top. I decided to put my own plumbing website. Okay, I'm not a plumbing right. company. I just put a plumbing website. I did all the optimization, the keyword research, the content, all that we do. I got my website to the top. So when somebody was searching for plumber in my city, toilet leak, whatever it is, right? They found my website, but here is the twist. Instead of putting my phone number, I put what's called a call tracking number, a call forwarding number. So when they call that number, that number I forwarded to a real plumbing company. Make sense? Right. So now sense. when they call, this, this customer is Googling plumber near me or, or tree company, whatever it is, right? Whatever service they're looking for. They find uh -huh. my website and they call the number. As a matter of fact, the first website I put up was a tree service company, a tree service, tree removal website. I still have that. I send that call to a random tree company 
who was doing Google ads. I could see he was running ads and he was paying Home Advisor and Angie and these leads. There are ways we can find that out. I knew he was spending money to get these leads. I sent mm -hmm. it to him. I sent one, two, three for free, three customers over one or two weeks. Then I called him up and said, hey, Mr. Tree Company Owner, these three customers you got last two weeks, and I had all the details because I can also, I get a copy of all the calls that's going to him because it's my call forwarding number. I said, these customers I sent to you, I can keep sending them to you. You already made the money by through these customers I sent. Every right. other marketing company reaches out to you and says, pay me money, I'll send you customers. And the only one I bet in your life who sent you customers already, I have not asked you for a dime. You made money, did you not? He was surprised. He said, yeah, <laughs> he actually made $1,500 from the three clients I, pay, I sent him. Wow. And I so, so, so let me Go ask ahead. you one, one quick question. Um, so you sent the calls to him before you talked to him? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so he didn't know where the calls were coming from. He just I would not him. recommend that now. We have a more of a better perfected way. But this was when I was starting back in 2014, right? 2015, okay. 16 is when I got into rank and rent. Before that, it was just local SEO clients, right? Okay. And he was surprised and he was like, okay, yeah. Um, I said, do you want me to send, do you want me to continue sending these customers? He was like, hell yeah, of course, right? Right. And right. I could say anything. He was like, how much do I pay you? What do I do to make, like, keep this ongoing? Right. Right. And I basically told him, hey, I don't have time to count every call. He told me he's paying $25 a call to Home Advisor and NG and all that, right? For, Per lead, I said, I don't have time to count the calls. We'll make it simple. Last month, I sent you eight calls, right? Um, I was like, somewhere around that. Last two weeks was four calls, so eight, one month will be eight calls on average. You say you pay $25 a call to NG and Home Advisor. We'll do the same thing, right? You just pay me $300 a month flat fee, and you'll get, you'll keep all the calls. I am not going to share these calls with anyone else. These are customers finding my website calling and they're calling your phone number directly exclusive to you and you can keep all these you just pay me 300 dollars a month flat fee this was actually i looked it up before i came on this here with you guys uh april or may of 2015 so about nine and a half years he's been paying he's me 300 dollars a month flat fee wow right wow. and i since, haven't touched since it. 2015 I, what's it since 2015, he's been paying you, or yep. 2016, he's About been nine paying you. Nine and a half years, wow. $300 a month, passive rental income he's paying me. Yep. And I don't have to, I don't have to worry about, you know, if, if it's a client, he may ask you for reports. He may ask you for ranking reports. Hey, what did you do this month? I'm paying you. This guy is just happy because he's paying me 300 a month. It's costing me eight to 10 to maybe $20 a month to run the website, hosting and stuff like that. Gotcha. So 90% profit margin, maybe 95% profit margin. And for wow. me, it's like a rinse and you know, set and forget, and I can move on to the next one, rinse and repeat. For him, he's paying me three hundred a month, and he's probably making fifteen hundred, twenty, you know, who knows, maybe ten thousand dollars a month. One time in the peak of his peak summer, I, I remember him telling me he made sixteen thousand dollars from my three hundred dollar a month he's paying me. Wow! So he's just happy. Make sense? I, I bet. So, so that's. <laughs> So That's just beautiful. to give you an idea, that's what rank and rent is. You rank your own website. You're, you own the website and you just rent it out. For whatever reason, if he stops paying you, he will not because he needs you. But for whatever reason, if he stops paying you for your rank, rank and rent website, you still own the website and the call number. You just go to a different company and forward the calls and they'll be happy to pay you. Right. Digital that's landlords. What rank and rent is, yes. Yeah. yeah, man. So how often do you talk to him? Oh, uh, great question. Once a year during Christmas, I send him a Christmas gift card, uh, 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 greeting card, and I call him up for New Year and say, hey, man, his name is Dwight. How are you? How are things? How's business? Anything else I can do for you? Let me know. I even wow. have talked to him and I told him, hey, man, I can put up more websites in different cities and send the calls so you can grow bigger. And he was right. like, this is what he told me. He's like, I'm 64 years old now. I'm just happy where I am. Right, I don't need any more business. Just, I just want to keep it this way. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, I'm happy. You're happy. You're my first. He was the first rank and rent client I had. So like, I have a special life. And I can, I could have always gone back and said, pay me more. You're making so much. But this is a, 
set and forget business. That's the way I see it. Right. Gotcha. So since you've been doing this, you know, for so long now, I'm sure you've encountered all of the obstacles and, yep. you know, pitfalls, the hurdles. What are the challenges that you've, you know, faced along the way? Good question. Um, one challenge is most of these business owners, they, especially unfortunately in this online marketing SEO space, a lot of these business owners have paid to other SEO companies and marketing companies and they have not seen results. So they're kind of, to earn their trust, it takes a couple of months. They're like, wait a minute, what you mean to say you're giving me a customer for free? No one's ever done that. What's the catch, right? And so I literally have to talk to them, explain how this model works. There's a bit of an education, one, two week education period involved to make them understand, hey, it's not your website, it's my website. But I'm not a tree company, you're the tree company. Make sense? I own this digital asset, right. but I'm going to rent it to you. What do you mean rent it to me? Right? I had to explain how it works. I had to explain, hey, people go to Google and search for tree removal in my city or painting in painter near me. Right. And so if 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 you don't come up on the top of Google, you don't get the customers. I have a website already that's on the top of Google and I'm getting these customers calling me. I want, I'm looking for a painting company or a tree company or a plumber to send these calls to. So just a bit of a, you know, that's one obstacle. The other obstacle is a good percentage of business owners, um, ones is they are good at their skill, right? A painter is good at painting, but he may not be the best at picking up the phone call and talking to a client, potential client, and right. selling the tree job, I mean, the painting job. Right. So sometimes I may have to educate them. because I've, There's so many times that I've listened to, I can record these calls, so I've listened to it, and the, I mean, a customer calls, the, the contractor, painting contractor or tree guy, he would pick up the phone and he would sound drunk. I mean, that's how we talk, he'd be like, hello? I'm going to help you. Right. And the customer was like, uh, are you a tree company? Like, like, are you even legit? Like, you know, so then I had to tell the painting contractor or the tree contractor, hey, when you pick up the phone call, it'll probably be wiser if you answer them saying, tree company, can I help you? Paint, right. this, is, this is painting, ABC painting company, can I help you? Right? All these little things is going to start building a trust with that lady who's calling you to look for a painting job or a concrete job or a tree job, right? And the chances of winning that job is gonna be higher. So that's kind of a thing because I've seen this, like you said, I've been in this game quite a few years. I help so many people. I've seen this time and time again, these are two most challenges. One, educating the potential contractor or the client okay. on what rank and run is. And two, just getting him on the phone. Like right. just people's skills, common sense, but you know, common sense is not common. Yeah, I can see that um, having them actually be ready, you know, to receive the, the customers and, you know, get on the phone and make this, you know, complete the sale, essentially, yeah, you know. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So to, to double back on um, what CD was asking earlier about, like, choosing the profitable niches and cities, what's that process like? Yeah. So I usually recommend going after service based businesses. Right. So think about it. You can put up a dentist website, rank it to the top. People are going to find it and call you and you can send it to a dentist. But think about it. One, with something like dentist, medical, all of those, they will want to check, hey, do you accept my insurance? How far away are you or is your office so I have to travel to you? All of those things. I usually okay. recommend service-based business. So home contractors, home repair, trees, painting, concrete, you know, insulation, where let's say HD, you're looking for a, a painter, you find the website on the top, you call, you don't care where he is located. You're gonna say, come to my home and give, look at what I, I would like you to paint and give me an estimate, give me a quote, right? Versus if it's a dentist or an eye doctor or whatever, you're probably gonna call them and ask you, hey, do you take my insurance? Um, you know, do you have availability? Like all of those other things. I got allergies. Do you take, you know, there's stuff like that, you know? So to keep it simple, I'd say go off the service-based business, landscaping companies, you know, handyman jobs, stuff like that. You can go after 
big cities like Chicago, let's take an example of Chicago or New York, millions of people. If you rank a website, if somebody is searching for plumbers in Chicago, right, with a million, I don't know the population of Chicago, maybe a million to two million population, there are probably a lot more people searching for a plumber every month than maybe a city like Ann Arbor, Michigan, where, which is near me, which is 100,000 population, right? So if right. you put up a website and rank it in Chicago, you will get a lot more calls and you can probably rent it for a lot more you know, money to a business. Uh -huh. But it's also right. going to take you a lot more time. It's more competitive to rank it. I usually say it's best to start in 100,000 to 150,000, maybe 100,000 to 200,000 population cities okay. because that's easier to rank the website and you'll still get enough calls to be able to rent it out. Got you it. can find an even smaller city like 20,000 population city and rank your website easy, but you may not get enough calls to be able to rent it out. You may only get one call a month, two calls a month, and you know, it may not be the best. So the sweet spot is 100,000 to 200,000 around that population. Okay. And service-based business. Yeah. Right. So with SEO and, and the emergence, right, of mm -hmm. AI and everything, how does that affect, you know, the model and how do you see rank and rent potentially evolving over the upcoming years? Great question. Um, especially with AI now, a lot of things have happened. There's actually pros and cons, right? 10, forget 10 years, even four, five, three, four years ago, I had a content writer who would write the content for the websites I put up. He would charge me $30 for every thousand words he would write. So if I am putting up a, 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 a plumbing website, I need to put a homepage of about a thousand, thousand five hundred words. I need mm -hmm. to put service pages, right? What services? I, you know, as a plumbing company, they can do a toilet fix, they can do drain clogging, all of those services, right? So for every page, he has to put write down the content, right? To put the website, he would charge me thirty dollars for every thousand words. He was based in South Africa, okay, right? If you were to hire a, somebody in the U.S., they'd probably charge you, I don't know, 35, 40 bucks for a thousand words. I was going to something like in South Africa or Philippines where you can, they'll charge you 30 bucks a thousand words. But now with AI, I can go to chat GPT. I can put a prompt saying, write a thousand word content for my plumbing website, include keywords like plumbing, plumber near me, leak detection, stuff like that. Uh -huh. And it's going to write it out for free. So AI has actually helped that way where I can put up a website content faster, cheaper, right? right? But on the other side, the flip side, the way AI is going, there's a lot more in the future to ask, answer your question, CD Bans, on future. A lot more people are searching not just on Google. They're also searching other platforms like TikTok. I know my 12-year-old, she goes to TikTok and search for food stuff to eat, restaurants to go to. I go to the next generation, the younger generation, TikTok and all of those are playing a bigger role. So who knows with rank and run and SEO long term, maybe everything is going to TikTok and Snapchat and all that. I don't know. But right now, at least for the next foreseeable future, two, three, four, five years, for sure, two, three years, Google is still the big kahuna when it comes to search. Right. You know, like 80%, 90% of the searches, people still go to Google. And we are in a time where we can literally leverage technology like AI, labor, which is cheaper in, you know, India, Eastern Europe and all that, right? And get clients in the US or UK or whichever country you're in. You just bridge the gap, leverage that labor and technology and make money. The, the, the typical business owner, the, the tree company guy here, the plumber, the, you know, all the HVAC contractor in the US, they are not as sophisticated with search, AI, all of that as you and I are. They know right. their job of taking care of the HVAC unit or the plumbing stuff, right? But not when it comes to this. So we can absolutely leverage that, that thing here. Yeah, and so the whole point of SEO, right, as you were mentioning, it's to get up to the top of the search results, right? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I was looking at some statistics a couple of days ago about like how many clicks percentage wise the first result gets versus mm -hmm. the second and the third and basically yeah. it's like once you get to the fourth and and below is almost non-existent okay. right um so w with that being said i know in google when you search especially for a local service uh type of um work to be done um you have what's called the google map pack 
yeah. right? Um, and in that Google Map Pack, it'll list typically three businesses, and sometimes yes. it'll include a fourth one, that, but that's a sponsored ad, right? Yes. Um, so tell us about the the Google Map Pack and how do we get listed on there, and wh what's that process like? Awesome, yeah, that's a great question. So, so Google, if you understand, they have this map pack. They have something called a Google Business Profile. If you are a local business, they want you to have a, it's called a GBP, Google Business Profile. Previously, it was called Google My Business. So you, some people call it GMB, GBP, Google List Profile, right? Mm -hmm. That's the top three is what it comes, like you said. That's where people can put the reviews and pictures and all of that, right? And you can attach your website, okay? How do you get a Google Business Profile? You have to be a real business. That's what Google wants you to do. With rank and rent, up until recently, you and I could just have any address. You can use your home address, your friend's address, and create a free GBP. And Google will send you a postcard. And you get, that postcard has a code, a four or five digit code. You put it in and voila, you have a GBP. Recently, in the last few months, about a year now, it's become video verification. You have to record a video saying, hey, I'm a real business. This is my home address. This is my, my equipment, stuff like that, to get it up. So with rank and rent, it has become a little bit difficult to put a Google listing. We still do it because, hey, we know AI. We know Photoshop, right? So there are two ways to go about it. You can literally, what I do is I have here, let me even show this to you. Uh, where did that go? Here we go. You can literally have like a print a business card like this or a postcard. Can you see it? Um, you can see it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Just example. what I'm saying is, you can print up a, a business card. So let's say you want to put up a tree service rank and run website HD. Okay. Uh -huh. Go to FedEx or Vista Print. Spend five, ten, fifteen bucks and print out a postcard. I mean, print out a, a, a business card. Just one or two that says a fictitious tree name, HT Tree Company, right? Name and all that, right? And and your home address or any address you can use. Okay. And then when you create the Google listing, you have to you have to record all that and show that you have all of that stuff. So what we do is we put up a website first. Anybody can put up a website. You can put up an HT3 company of Chicago.com website. Uh -huh. So you then take out your phone as part of the video verification for the GBP. You show the phone, you record the video and say, hey, this is my tree website. You can see it. Then go here, this is my business card, right? Some of my students, they even can go outside and they show the address. Okay, and say right. 123 ABC Street, that's the address of my company. And then what they do is they go to the garage and depending on what business, you can know, a tree company, have a um, some kind of a big banner that's, you know, spend another 30 bucks to have a big banner that says tree company and put it out there. If you are, um, I have a painter rank and run site and we bought a paint, a paint can from Home Depot. Right. Take it there and you know a couple of paint you know, just just to show as if that's your equipment and Google will verify it. Remember, mm -hmm. Google nobody is is manually looking and verifying these. It's mm -hmm. AI. It's just going to watch the video AI or whatever the algorithm is, right, and verify. Right. It. It's a bit complicated. You have to run through a little bit of hoops in terms of verifying it. But you can spend fifty to hundred bucks do this video verify it. And then this website, once it's ranked and rented, you can easily make three hundred to thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month passive income. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I ran into. I had a brick and mortar uh, business, and I, I didn't know what that came from or or why they did it, but I had already mm -hmm. verified it in the map pack, and then they came back maybe like a month later and wanted me to re-verify um, with a video, and I didn't notice um like what was going on but i just did you know the video went outside took a picture of the address mm -hmm. and stuff like that so um do you think that was a direct um um it, it, correlation between rank and rent and, and no 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 so google's um last few months google has been doing a lot of updates so every few months google does an algorithm update last year almost usually it was for the last 10 years it's been like once in six months they have an update right Gotcha. Last year has been like almost every month, um, and even Google even published uh, uh, some kind of a, a paper a few months ago saying, as part of their all these updates, they messed it up a little bit. Even for real verified GBPs, 
somehow the, the algorithm was asking to re-verify it. Uh -huh. uh, but it's, yeah, so that could have been one of the reasons. That, that was nothing to do with rank and rent. Um, Google, end of the day, Google doesn't know rank and rent local. Google just say, sees your website and a Google listing and then has all these metrics on how to rank it. If you have all those elements in place, you're going to rank. Google does not know, HT, if you really have a plumbing website, a plumbing company and a putting website, or if it's a rank and rent website. In Google's eyes, you're all a business, you're all a website. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's one thing I, I just watching your content. I would um, encourage everyone watching this to go and check out Saravanan's uh, channel, YouTube channel. We'll link it in the description. Um, but you have like tons and tons of content, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing that you say over and over again is that Google is an algorithm, right? It's, you know, yeah, they have workers and people working, but at the end of the day, it is that they, they can't look at everything, right? Um, and so just keeping that in mind that it is an algorithm that's checking this stuff. Right. Um, and so our job is to, and uh, essentially we're marketers, right? We're, we're building a, a funnel, right? For leads to come in. And so our job is to um, present that business, right? Uh, and that property, that digital piece of real estate in the best light as possible in terms of Google's algorithm, right? So you're talking about putting things on the page, uh, your title, your meta tags, your uh, meta description, um, you know, the H1 headings and all of those types of things, yes. um, making that look as good as possible and as natural as possible to Google um, so that it understands that you are whatever type of service site that right. you're building. Is that you right? You hit it on the head. You hit it on the head, HD. Google, according to Google itself, they have hundreds of ranking factors. But I'll tell you, they have about six to eight foundational stuff that you need to do. If you take care of that, 80% of the time you're ranking. If you're very competitive, like a personal injury lawyer in New York City, very competitive keyword, you may have to do a lot more, right? But for 80% of the rank and rent size, the local businesses out there, you just do eight, six to eight, maybe 10 different things on your website and your GDP profile. You're ranking on the top. You're getting calls. You can literally do anything. Okay, and I think um, uh, CD has has an appointment he has to run to. Sure. So no we'll just keep the conversation going. Yep. Um, so, what's your preferred pricing model? I know in the beginning you said you you um, were doing SEO and then you switched over to rank and rent yes. once you saw that was better and. I think you said that flat fee is the best, right? Versus pay per lead. Yeah, so you can do the different ways you can make money, right? So when you say when I say SEO, SEO is still the the art or the the science of ranking a website. So whether it's client SEO as you do for a client, rank and rent as you do for your own website. I still have clients where I, you know, they pay me for six, eight, twelve months and then they stop being a client. That's fine, right? But the beauty with rank and rent is I own the asset. So month after month, I can get paid. If this client's not going to pay me for that, somebody else is going to pay me for that. You know? Right. Does that make sense? Right? So yeah, that makes a lot of I, sense. Yeah. When I start with rank and rent, let's say I'm putting up a brand new, or I, let's say I'm, I'm helping UHT to put up a brand new website. We identify the city, 100,000 to 200,000 population. We look into some of the, the, the top guys who are ranking to see which one's the low-hanging fruit, the easier to rank. So let's uh -huh. just say as an example, we decided on painter in, uh, I don't know, Franklin, Michigan. Okay. Uh -huh. Then you put up a website, you follow the process, right? You can put a Google profile. You don't have to put a Google profile. You can just use a website around and rank it. That's fine too. As you get the calls going on, usually the way I would advise most people is you get the, you, you answer the first call. So the first call that comes in as your website gets ranked on the top, that call forwarding number, you send it to yourself, okay. right? And there's something called a call whisper. So when you pick up the phone call from this number, you have no idea who it is. As soon as you connect the phone, right, you will hear a whisper message that says, lead from painting website or whatever. Gotcha. So you know, oh, okay, it's a potential customer. It's not some rank, some random dude somewhere or your friend or whatever, okay? Right. And so then you can answer the phone and say, painting company, can I help you? And on the other end is for a potential customer and maybe a sweet old lady in Franklin, Michigan saying, hey, I'm looking to paint my house. Uh, how much is it going to cost to paint a room? And uh -huh. you can say, all right, ma'am, um, I'd love to take your name, your address, 
And what's the best time so me or one of my guys can come out, take a look, and give you a free estimate? Right. And she'll say, my name is Jane Doe, 123 ABC Street. If you can come today, anytime you're 9 and 5, I'll be great. And you can say, all right, great. I am going to have, in the next hour, my main guy will give you a call and schedule the exact time we can come. She'll be like, sure. Right. Then you turn around, you go to Google and you search for painter in Franklin, Michigan. And there are people who are running Google ads. There are other businesses who are not on the top three. Go find the ones who are not on the top. Call one or two of them and say, hey, Mr. Painter, I can I refer you a painting company? Can, can I refer you a painting client? Can you take care of this painting client? And he'll say, sure. I mean, which business is, not go is going to say, no, I cannot take care of a customer, right? <laughs> right. And I find it best just to be totally transparent and say, I'm not a customer. I have this website that brings calls. I'm looking for a painting company to take care of this. Right now I have a live customer. If you can call her back, schedule a time for an estimate, you take care of her, you make the money, it's yours. Right. But going forward, if this makes sense to you, we can talk some kind of relationship. Right. Nine out yeah. of 10 guys would be like, yeah. Exactly. I, I just want to say for those listening and watching, I've, I've been in uh, Satavanan's groups um, and like coaching calls and things like that. And, and, and by the way, definitely check the links in the, in the description. We're going to leave a link to your uh, Facebook group. Um, and in, in one of those calls, in a lot of those calls, actually, he has literally searched Google ads, called up. Uh, business owners and went through the exact script that he just said super simple super straightforward and it's amazing to see how well it works <laughs> so you're like the guru at that the yeah. the seo guru and the cold call guru <laughs> yeah this, um, i just want to quickly say one thing and i am i am not a salesperson or extrovert i love to just sit behind my computer and do my stuff Rather than make right. a cold call. But this is not a cold call because a cold call is when you call a company and you pitch something. Here mm -hmm. is the other way around. You call the company and says, hey, do you do painting? I got a customer. And they are pitching you why you should give it to them because they, yeah, yeah, I can take the job. I'm good. You know, like uh, they will sell themselves uh, to you. You don't have to sell themselves. Because you're like, you don't like the job. No big deal. Like I'll, I'll call your competitor because I have a live customer. I have something that every business needs, Right. right. That's the right. beauty of the skill of SEO. You have a skill once you learn it. You can. I started with three company, three hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have websites paying me three thousand dollars a month. Wow! You know, one of my students, quite a few of them, they started their own website. Then instead of renting it out, they said, "Hey, why should I rent it out? I turn this into my own business and subcontract it out." Right. Right. I mean, there's so many ways you can make money with this model. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and speaking about Proctor, that's one thing uh, he talks about, too. Right. The MSIs. Right. The multiple yes. sources of income. And instead of I, I think a lot of times people think um, horizontally and they think, you know, I'll start a, you know, a rank and rent business over here. I'll start a car wash over here. I'll start a, you know, a different business over here, a different one over here. Instead of thinking, how about either you stack them, right? So let's say you choose to go into the tree service niche, right? And so in, in, instead of trying to get different businesses, how about creating multiple tree service websites okay. and sell to multiple tree service contractors or get one contractor, a tree service contractor, and then do multiple websites that would essentially serve as multiple sources of income. So you, you may have a tree removal website and then you may have a stump grinding and then you may have something else that's related to some type of tree service. And that way you can stack those on top of each other for one client and bring them more and more and more customers. And Absolutely. at the same time, they're uh, paying for more and more websites. Exactly. Um, yeah. You hear it on so, the head. Yeah, and and, and 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 one thing, doubling back, <clears throat> there was a, a question that was posed in the group this morning. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but someone was asking, um, in, in terms of those phone numbers, right? They were asking, could you do essentially like 
extensions like have one number and then extension one extension two extension three would you recommend that or would you recommend something you can different? do that so what they're asking is hey um are they asking if the extension one would go to one free contractor and then press two to go to another free contract so you can send one website to different free companies yeah or let's say if you're starting out with a, a tree service company a contracting company and a this company mm -hmm. or that company and have different extensions so you call one number and you know for tree service press one for concrete press two for no i would i would stay away from that um okay. in my experience that can get the the shorter you want the customer connecting to the contractor or the, the company the faster okay. you're going to make money Okay. Amazon.com. Why is Amazon so huge? They have a one click. They came up with the one click buy. It's crazy. Buy now. You have to buy. Before I remember websites where I want to buy something and they're like, buy. Then the next is like, next page is like, uh, is everything fine on that? Agree to it. Confirm. It was like, oh my God, how many things do you want me to put in? Okay, one click buy. And they are right. the, the biggest company on the on planet Earth, right? The faster you connect to the customer, to the client, the faster you're going to make money. That's what you want to do. Okay. Okay. So, um, next question, how do you find the businesses? And I think you touched on this a little bit, but how do you find the businesses, uh, to rent your rank sites to? And I know you mentioned like, uh, Google ads going through the list. So not the people that are showing up in the map pack or in right. the top three results. So you're going down into more, or are, are you clicking yeah. on the map pack and going? The best through? way is to find those who are running who are paying for Google Ads. That means they're already paying money for that, right? Okay. And you just call them up and say, hey, again, education, right? Mr. Production Client, the same script. Okay, I got his website, I can send the calls to, and then make him understand. I see you're paying, you're running Google Ads. Mm -hmm. That's like renting real estate from Google. If you right. stop paying rent, you don't show up you're, you're on, on Google and you don't get paid. You don't get customers. Right. What I'm doing is I'm building the whole house. It's already built out there, right? You can <laughs> right. rather take it from me. It's going to be a lot cheaper, right? Right. You'd rather own real estate and get organic traffic than rent real estate, which is everybody understands that. Right. Yeah. You know? And that's what you want to do. So are there any other places where you find those? Yep. Angie.com, A-N-G-I.com. That's the... Right. Old name is Home Advisor. Um, what Home Advisor does, and it's a, we looked it up the other day, it's like so many billion dollar companies, a huge company, right? Mm -hmm. They would take one lead. So let's say HT, okay, I'll give you a real example. My wife last year went and searched for painter in my city and she went to ng.com and she put in her phone name, phone number and, uh, and address, I believe. And yep. that Home Advisor, took my wife, which is a potential client, who is a potential client for painting, right. and gave that lead information to four different painting company contractors. Yep. And four different guys then call, called my wife. And all of them came to take a look and give an estimate. And me being me, I was talking to all these guys trying to understand what they do, right? right. And each of them paid $75 to Home Advisor to get my, my address, my wife's phone number. Wow. So when you go to the painter and say, with Home Advisor, your one lead, customer's potential lead uh, information, you're paying $75, your competitors are also paying $75 each, right. right? And then you guys are competing with yourself. Rather, what I do, similar to Home Advisor, but I don't share the lead, I give it directly to you. And that right. makes a whole lot of sense to these guys. Yeah, and that, that goes to what you were just saying about getting the customer to their end goal as quick as possible. Absolutely, right? yes. When they call, they want to speak to someone. Exactly. That says, yes, yeah. we can do it. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I ran into the same thing. I was we were we were extending our patio and putting up a fence around our pool. Mm -hmm. And we had reached out to I want to say it was Angie's list. This was years ago, but same thing happened. We we're getting emails, we we're getting calls from multiple people. And it gets overwhelming, right? Re realistically, I just want someone to come in and extend the patio and put the fence in exactly. right, for a good price, right? Okay. Um, so what types of tools? I know in the trainings, you um, you use a Ahrefs a lot um, and SimRush. What other types of tools are there that's associated with the Rank and Rent? There are so many tools. Literally, if you're starting out, you can just use the free tools, right? Okay. 
So if you do a search for tree service in your city or painter, you can go to Google Keyword Planner. Just Google it, Google Keyword Planner. That's mm -hmm. Google's free tool where it shows you tree service and all the related searches that people are searching. Tree removal company near me, licensed tree guys near me, local tree company near me, stump grinding in my city, all of that. It'll give you literally hundreds of search results and the search number, how many people a month are searching. So right. now you got, these are called keywords. You have just download all those keywords into an Excel sheet or a Google sheet, and you can put up a website, write content with those keywords. Right. Right. So that's free. Ahrefs I use to go and when you're now putting a website, you can start seeing what keywords your website is ranking for. So you have a website of tree service. Maybe it's on position 28, which is the bottom of page three in the search results for tree removal in your city. Maybe it's position five, which is the top of page five or thumb grinding. So you can track it. But again, you don't need Ahrefs. That's a paid tool. You can go to something like um, Uber Suggest. Send rush, there are free versions of that and use it. Right? Okay. And start with all these paid tools, exactly. I mean, start with the free tools, is what I'm saying. Free. And then as you make money, you can invest in more premium stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I've actually started um a tree service website, and this was a while ago, but I went back and started updating it, and it was at sitting at like page or um at like 30 in the in the results. Mm -hmm. But I went back through like watching your course and everything and just started building out the content, um, adding more pages and things like that. And I've started to see it move. So now it's at like 19. So it went from yeah. 30 something to 19 <laughs> using yeah. using these tactics. So I'm, I'm going to keep Absolutely. working on it. Give it another um, two, three, four weeks. You should be on nine, eight, seven, five and start getting calls. Cool. So what 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 other advice would you give folks that are looking to um, get into this? Here's the thing, right? Um, some people think, hey, do I have to be technical to put up a website, do this research and all that? Again, remember what I said, you can leverage AI and leverage cheap labor. These are like you, I don't, I honestly, I can put up a basic website, HT. I cannot put up a good looking website, but I got hundreds of websites. Because I wow. I have a web I have a couple of few web developers now, four different web developers who work for me full time. They're in the Philippines. But you can go to a place like fiverr.com, legit.com, onlinejobs.ph, upwork.com, and you can find website developers who have full-time jobs in, in let's say Sri Lanka or India or Philippines, and they are doing this part-time to make extra money. Right, you can right. literally find somebody and pay them 50, 60 bucks, 50 bucks to put a whole website and they will do it faster and better than you, than you taking time to learn it, right? And then you just go and rent it out, okay? Because these guys, $60, so I'll give you a real example. When I first started, one of the first websites I, I, I made was for my local restaurant where I eat, is a kebab shop, like a shawarma shop. Uh -huh. I went to the guy and said, I was just learning all this that time, okay, 2014. And I told him, hey, I looked, I took a look at your website. It's, I literally told him this. It's not very good looking. I can make it better. And he's like, I was looking for somebody. I also need you to put this menu on the website and a couple of things on the website. I said, yeah, I'll do it. He's like, how much? I had no idea, like 300 bucks. He said, done. I could have probably asked you more. <laughs> I just said 300 right. bucks. He's like, done. I did not know anything. So I took a, I took a copy of his menu card. Okay, mm -hmm. I went to fiverr.com, fiverr.com, yep. and there are other web developers there you can hire. And I found a guy and I paid him thirty bucks. He's in Sri Lanka. Wow, one dollar is three hundred rupees in Sri Lanka. So he made nine thousand rupees for maybe two, three, four hours of his time. Later on, I got to find out his full time income there was twenty five thousand rupees a month, working for full time as a web developer. Wow. And he made 9,000 rupees for four hours. He's happy. Okay. <laughs> wow. I am happy because for 30 yeah. bucks, I got this happen. And I got paid 300 bucks. Right. Right. I got 90% profit margin here. And you can yeah. do this I, the very next day, not next day, next month, like February of 2015. I got a client who paid me $3,500. Mm -hmm. And I paid somebody $600 or $800. I'm, I don't remember how much. And I made my profit was about two thousand nine hundred to three thousand dollar profit, 
that was like the most amount of money I made that time. I took me, my wife, I had one kid that time. I said, surprise trip, we're going to Singapore. 3,000 bucks, man, I just flew to Singapore <laughs> for a vacation, you know, because my full-time income as an engineer with a bachelor's degree in engineering, master's degree in engineering was $6,000 a month. And here right. I made $3,000 just, just doing part-time. You know, wow. that's, that's what I'm excited about this thing. Yeah, and that's that's what attracts me uh, to it as well. And that's one thing we we preach a lot on this channel is about passive income, right? Um, we talk about it over and over again, and the yeah. importance of it, um, and having that you know um, that lifestyle balance between work and you know the things that that you're doing that you don't really want to do, but the lifestyle that versus the lifestyle that you want to live, right? That is uber important. And, and which is why the rank and rent model checks a lot of those boxes, um, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so, if you so, think about, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. No, I was just about to say, if you think about it, everyone, you ask my eight-year-old or you ask my eight-year-old grandma, it doesn't matter. Everyone knows Real estate is the holy grail of passive income. You could be in 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 uh, Chicago, you could be in Saudi Arabia. Everybody wants to own houses on real estate, right? Passive income, right? Right, right. Very few people know digital real estate, right? If I had to make a thousand dollars a month passive income from real estate, HT, you know this. I have yep. to put at least at least a hundred thousand dollar home. These days, you cannot find a hundred thousand dollar home and rent it for thousand bucks. It has to be two hundred thousand at least. Right. At least 20%, even if you're a veteran and you put 3%, you have to put 10 to 15K, whatever, then right. closing costs, then find a tenant, screen him, all of that. And then some garage door will stop working and you're, you know, all this stuff. Right. Here, to make the same $1,000 a month, you can spend $200 to $300 one time between the website, content, a couple of backlinks, learn a few things and rank it and rent it out for $1,000 a month, easy to a business owner. Right. right. And, and, and like you said, you... Yeah, and you have all those expenses. We're dealing with we're dealing with HOA right now, so we have a, a condo at the beach, um, mm -hmm. and we're dealing with issues with the HOA. We're dealing; they're going up on the the prices. Stuff is breaking. It's like on Airbnb, so those yeah. types of renters really are rough on the properties. Um, so when you actually look at the costs of physical yeah. real estate, and you know. You're also kind of capped, A, at how much you can charge per night if it's an Airbnb, and B, if you're like, if you have a long term renter, you're kind of capped at how much you can uh, right. charge, right? Yeah. And so that amount that you actually make off of it ends up being like 200 to 500 bucks, exactly. if not less. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you get to own the asset and it appreciates, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But that's a very good point. And so with, with the rank and rent model, right? Digital real estate. It's a more, much more um, feasible investment, right? And mm -hmm. you're taking minimum amounts of money, and then that thousand dollars that you could make, like you were saying, really is a thousand. And and maybe you know you pay ten dollars here, twenty dollars there for hosting exactly. and building and things like that. So Absolutely. this is a, a a really beautiful model, man. And I'm I'm really looking forward to working with you um, sure. and learning more and just diving into this. So, so over the next few years, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this over the next few years, where do you see rank and rent evolving and how do you plan to, I guess, pivot and, and stay a leader in this space? I'm all about passive income. I'm all about building assets that produce passive cash flow. right? Uh -huh. So one of the things I'm doing with rank and rent, I'm still putting out websites. We're still finding content, rank it out, rent it out. But over time, once I have a relationship with this, these contractors, I'm slowly becoming an equity partner, revenue share partner with them. Because oh, now yeah. over, over, over these years, as you do rank and run, you some, start learning some marketing. You have so much information. Like I'll give you an example. I had a concrete, I have a concrete contractor in a small upstate, up, up, upstate in New York. Okay. Not Manhattan okay. in like Syracuse, New York. Right. Okay. He started with me at $300 a month rank and rent. Over time now, I've now come to an agreement where he's paying $300 a month plus the percentage of every job that he makes. He, does it make sense? And then, sense. and then he now wants to go commercial um, concrete work. 
all over New York and Florida during the winter. So we're putting all of that. And so I told him it, it won't be rank and rent. I'm going to build it as a whole brand, the website. We're going to put a Facebook page. We're going to, you know, because commercial, these are bigger companies. They'll want to do the due diligence, all of that. So now it's a bigger piece of the pie. Right. But even as he was doing that, he, one of his, uh, the guys who work for him in the concrete company, uh -huh. that guy can also fix garages. So when we, uh -huh. he came to me and said, hey, man, there's a lot of people searching. Even like in the winter, concrete can be slow in Syracuse. And he's like, um, I want to do some garage door repair. So we said, well, yeah, let's do, you know. So we are more of a part. So 15% of every garage door uh, job he gets, I get to make some money. So two months ago, I got paid $1,500. He paid me for all the, all the jobs for the last month, right? Mm -hmm. Even though I started two, three years ago at $300 a month, it's now at $1,500 a month. That can right. keep going up because this guy's ambitious. My right. tree guy who I first started, he's, I'm, he's like, I just want to, I'm 63. I just want to be, I just, no, that's fine. So different right. folks, different strokes, you know how it is. You can right. scale it, you know, big time. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, the, the, the rev, rev share model um, was one thing that popped in my head as well with, with this. And just being able to make that connection, I think, is is phenomenal on top yeah. of the the rank and rent you know monthly um payments that they would they would do wow that's a lot so everyone i would really really encourage you guys to go and check out um sarah vannon's training his youtube channel the facebook group he provides so much information it is ridiculous um i'm also in the course and there's tons, like how many videos, hundreds of videos, just... 200 plus videos. And every week we have weekly coaching calls, answering your questions. Like you said, doing it live, you know, yeah. I literally, um, what we do is like, you can come and we, people have done this all the time. You can show up on our Thursday weekly coaching call and say, Hey man, I am in this city. I'm thinking about this tree service. What do you think? And live, we can see, we figure out how to get it going. The goal is not just to, for you to go through 200 videos to learn. Right. Right. You don't want to just be learning all the time. That's what I see in, in, in most people doing in the online space. You want to yep. learn the main ones and start making money because why do you want to go through 15 videos on how to put a website when you can find somebody for 50 bucks who can do the website for you? You mm -hmm. want to learn the more important things where you can talk to how to talk to a business owner, connect them, get them paying you, stuff like that. So that's when freedom comes. Yeah. You know? No, that that's that's my problem to be. um Frank and honest, that is my problem. I, you know, I, I learn a lot. I like to learn. And so I'm yeah. always like, learn, show me more videos. I'm taking notes. I'm doing all these things. But at one thing, though, and, you know, with the League of Hustlers and what we always encourage is to take action. So I always make sure that I take action, yes. too. But I do know that that is a real thing, like falling into that trap of yes. being a lifelong learner. Right. Which is good, you know, but you also want to add action to that. So. I would encourage everyone to take action. Um, look up Sarah Vannon, click on the links below. Um, consider joining the program. This is like top tier stuff, guys. Um, is there anything else you wanna wanna end with, Sarah Vannon? Nope. Um, I appreciate you, you know, having me here. I enjoy talking. I could talk business and marketing and rank and rent all day long. I, I you know, uh, thank you again. I appreciate that. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. As always, hit us up at questions at leagueofhustlers.com. If you have any questions, definitely check out the links below. And we'll see you next time. Let's get it. Let's go. Follow for more. Cheers.